this set of videos, we're going to be looking at running water or rivers. Here's you a nice little quote from Dr. Hindu. The stream is simply channelized flow. Water likes to channelize itself. It's going to find a low point and then run down as, as a stream of water. And that channelized flow could include something large, like the Mississippi River you see on the left of the screen, or something smaller, like a little mountain brook on the right. In all of these, the physics are exactly the same. So here we're going to look at a drainage network. Um, these, side dra these side drainages that pour into the big ones are called tributary streams. These streams are going to make up our drainage network. We can learn a lot about the underlying geology by the shape of the network. We'll probably end up looking at some of those in class. Each drainage network lies within a drainage basin. A drainage basin is the entire area that is drained by a single stream and its tributaries. And in this in case, you can see here is an outline of the entire Mississippi River drainage basin. It's the largest one in the United States, and one of the largest in the world. And what that means is anywhere that water falls in here as precipitation ends up running through the Mississippi River. So, for instance, the Yellowstone River actually runs through Yellowstone National Park. Um, starts over here with Yellowstone Lake. So let's pretend that on the, on the shores of Yellowstone Lake is a buffalo. They like to live there. And it snows on this buffalo. And as the snow falls onto the buffalo, it starts to melt thanks to his body heat. And that water drips off of him onto the ground. Well, that water is going to run down into the Yellowstone River. The Yellowstone River joins up with some other ones like the Big Horn and the Powder River. Eventually, that's going to meet the Missouri River. The Missouri River travels down through several states until it runs into the Mississippi River. And then that water ends up coming out to the mouth of the Mississippi in the Delta, just past New Orleans. So that snow that melted on that buffalo near Yellowstone ends up passing by New Orleans. And that's what happens to all the water inside that drainage basin, which is actually kind of interesting, right? So drainage basin, the edges of the drainage basin, um, are denoted by a topographically high part um, known as a divide. So divide actually divides different drainage basins. So if the water falls on, say, the east side of this divide, the water ends up flowing east. And if it flows on the west side of this divide, it ends up meeting up with rivers to the west. Um, this one's an interesting one because this right here is known as the Great Divide, at least for the United States. This runs along the ridge of the Rocky Mountains for the most part, and it denotes the place where our rivers kind of split. So everything that the everything east of the Great Divide will end up draining into either the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean. Everything west of the Divide will end up draining into the Pacific Ocean or the Gulf of California. So we're going to look a little bit about stream velocity and how fast streams move and how much water moves through there. So we're going to measure how much water is in the stream. We do that by describing the discharge. So discharge defines the volume of water flowing past a given point in a given amount of time. We can also um, describe discharge with a mathematical equation. So the discharge is also the width of a stream times the depth of the stream times the velocity of the stream. And in all that cases, that's going to actually give you the same, uh, same units because width and depth are both in meters and velocity is in meters per second. So when you multiply all this together, that gives you meters cubed per second. Meters cubed is a volume, so it's a volume per time, which basically means the same thing, right? Um, what that means is lots and lots of water is going to be a big discharge. Or, not a lot of water, but water that's moving really fast is going to have a really big discharge. There's a lot of water moving through the system. Versus, if you have a very small, narrow stream, you have a very slow moving stream. That's going to tend to lower your discharge. Now this is set naturally, mostly by uh, rainfall or weather patterns or even uh, seasonal variations. 
Now, a couple terms I should make sure you know at this point. The bottom of the river channel is called the bed, and the sides of each of the each side of the river channel is called a bank. So I'm using those as we go through these videos, just to make sure you keep those straight. So the discharge, if you have more water, the water tends to flow faster. That's going to affect the velocity. Another thing that will affect the velocity of your stream is the gradient. So the gradient is the slope of the river bed. Um, the gradient is going to be the highest at the head or the beginning of the stream. This tends to be up in mountainous higher areas. And it gets more and more gentle as you go down. This is the longitudinal stream profile, um, where you, you get to the mouth of the stream. A mouth is the end of a stream, and it, usually at the mouth, it generally runs into another body of water, and like it meets up with a larger stream, or a lake, or a river, uh, or an ocean. Sometimes they just sort of disappear, but most of the time a mouth is where it runs into something else. Uh, so that's where your gentlest slope is. So things tend to move very slowly here. Interestingly enough, it also tends to have some of the highest discharges though, because you usually have a bunch of tributaries meeting up by the time you get to the mouth of the stream. Just like the example I showed you of the Mississippi River. Now we're looking at the cross section of the stream. So here's the bed of the stream. Here are the banks in the picture. There's an area in the middle of the stream where the water is going the fastest. And if you've ever been salt river tubing, you probably found this. You want to get your inner tube to the middle of the stream where you're going to go the fastest. This is called the thalweg, if you're into these kind of terms. So that's the line of the highest velocity along the stream. And the thalweg is usually found towards the center of the stream just below the surface. And that's because the bed and the banks cause friction that causes drag. The surface of it also has uh, drag because of air friction, so that maximum velocity is just below that. As the stream moves, so if you have curves in the stream, where that fall wig is, is not necessarily down the middle of the stream. But you can see if there's a big curve, we call this a meander, that fall wig tends to be on the outer side of it, the inside of it goes a little slower. We're going to see what that does in terms of shaping the river.